Normal methods of concrete construction require construction or day joints, which, in the finished structure, can be a source of leaks. When structural cracking does occur, then remedial measures will be necessary. Joint or crack sealing needs to be performed in a methodical manner to ensure proper closure of such voids. A joint or crack sealing process requires four to five phases, each with several individual procedures. 1. Positioning of the packers. 2. Preparation for injection. 3. Injection at each position. 4. Cleaning of the injection equipment. 5. Cosmetic post-treatment. To achieve successful injection of cracks or joints, it is important that all the necessary equipment and accessories, such as blowout pump, injection packer, impeller mixer and injection pump, are readily available on site before commencement of the work. The first thing to do is to complete a crack injection log sheet. This log serves as a permanent record by documenting all known information on the crack and the injection measures performed. This document may be helpful in the event of possible future claims. Positioning of drill holes and packers. Proper spacing of the drill holes and packers is crucial. Generally, packers are spaced at distances equaling half the cross-section thickness. In our example, 150 mm on center. First, a drill template is denoted on the surface in such a fashion that drilling at an angle of approximately 45 degrees will cut across the crack plane at midpoint. Where joints and cracks are accessible on one side only, as in our given base slab to wall example, drill in single file. In other level surface applications, the injection points are positioned left and right alternatingly along the crack. The used drill bit diameter is selected according to packer size. Start drilling perpendicular at each injection point and subsequently pivot drill to an angle of 45 degrees. Continue to drill towards the joint center. It is essential that the drill hole penetrates the crack or joint. Therefore, the depth of the drilled hole should exceed the theoretical depth by at least 50 mm. After completion of drilling, clean any debris from the drilled holes using compressed air. This is a key step, since it will ensure secure anchorage of the packer during installation. After cleaning, insert the packers into the drilled holes. Do not use a hammer to tap the conical heads, as this may damage the delicate valve tips. Preferably use a box spanner to tap the packers into the drilled holes. All packers must be tightened as required after placement. For all packers, it is absolutely necessary to check for adequate torque. Avoid excessive tightening in order to prevent packer shear off. Prior to injection, recheck that each packer has been properly installed. Crack or joint preparation. Prior to the injection process, it may be necessary to seal wider cracks or joints to prevent unintended seepage of the injection resin. Clean the surfaces from all bond inhibiting debris or residue. Use the specially formulated Frank sealing compound. To achieve a homogeneous consistency, carefully mix in accordance with the product specification. Before proceeding with injection, wait for the compound to set and harden completely. Any excess material remaining or cleaned from the surface can be treated as general waste. Crack or joint injection. For all cracks or joints with a strong active water flow, the first priority must be to stop the flow of water. If such water flow is not contained, the Intectin Plus sealing resin would simply be washed out of the crack or joint before it had a chance to cure. The steps of this pre-grouting process are as follows. Carefully mix the components of the Intectin Blitz resin, including the accelerator, using the recommended mixing equipment. The resin reacts on contact with the water. In so doing, it forms foam that stops the flow of water. 
since the highly reactive intactin blitz may be activated by atmospheric humidity alone, always make sure to keep containers properly sealed. Inject intactin blitz into the leaking crack or joint using the already positioned packers. For vertical cracks, the ideal injection procedure is to start with the lowermost packer and work your way to the top in a step-by-step -step manner. For horizontal cracks, start on one side and work your way across to the other side. Injection pressures should be in the range of 20 to 40 bar, but should never exceed 80 bar. The foam stops the undesired flow of water, but does not provide a permanent sealing effect. Note that only the use of Intectin Plus ensures the actual sealing of the joint or crack. Continue to inject the crack or joint with Intectin Blitz in the above sequence until the water flow within the crack or joint is stemmed. Afterwards, clean the injection equipment and tools prior to final grouting. When using Intectin Blitz, it is important to note that subsequent injection of Intectin Plus commences prior to curing of the Blitz resin. Otherwise, the packers cannot be filled with Intectin Plus and new packers need to be placed. Dry and moist joints or cracks, as well as joints and cracks pre-grouted using Intectin Blitz, are injected in accordance with the following guidelines. The two-component Intectin Plus already contains both components A and B in the proper mixing ratio. For the resin to be effective, completely fill component B into component A and carefully mix both components using the recommended mixing equipment. After thorough mixing, check the mixture for uniformity by pouring the resin from one container to another several times. Before using the pump, always check that it is in full working order. All residues of cleaning agents must be expelled prior to commencing injection. Once correctly mixed, inject Intectin Plus into the crack or joint using the already positioned packers. Injection pressures should be in the range of 20 to 40 bar. If pressures in excess of 80 bar are encountered, this generally indicates that there is a problem, for example a drilled hole that did not go through the crack or joint. The injection log should always be maintained during grouting operations. Before the pot life expires, which is approximately 100 minutes for Intectin Plus, re-grout the crack another time and, if required, several times using the already described sequence in order to achieve complete crack filling. Cleaning the injection pump. To ensure reuse of all of the equipment, we recommend the use of Intectin Special Cleaner. This will guarantee that the equipment, such as stirra and ejection pump, remains completely free of any resin residue. Please take note of the recommendations contained in the safety data sheets regarding safe handling of both resins and cleaners. These data sheets are available for download from maxfrank.com. Cosmetic Post Treatment Foot valve packers that have been used here provide advantages over other conventional packer types. The upper part of the packer can be unscrewed immediately after the final injection. If conventional screw packers are used, the resin must cure for at least 24 hours before packer removal. Use a trowel to remove any excess resin on the concrete surface. The injection holes left after removal of the upper section of the packers can be filled using the Frank filler compound. If required, the remaining surface of the crack or joint can also be smoothed off using the special filler. Summary of the materials. Depending upon the specific requirements of any individual project, different materials are used to achieve a successful crack or joint injection. Frank Special Compound Filler 2 Component Material for initial filling of cracks and cosmetic post treatment, Intectin Blitz PU Injection Resin for stemming of water flow in cracks or joints, Intectin Plus PU Resin for the sealing of dry, moist, and pre grouted cracks or joints, Intectin EP Epoxy Resin for sealing of dry and moist cracks or joints. 
intact an acrylic resin, whether working at low temperatures down to 0 degrees Celsius, intact and special cleaner, suitable for the cleaning of PU and EP resins. Summary of the phases. For phases 1 to 3, the individual procedures will vary depending upon the crack or the joint. For phase 1, the drill holes must be drilled in accordance with the project requirements. If access is only possible from one side, the drill holes must be in single file. Otherwise, they should be alternated between the left and right sides. It is important that the drilled holes pass through the gap to be sealed at an angle of approximately 45 degrees at the cross-section center. Furthermore, the drilled holes must be completely free from dust and other debris. When inserting the packers, make sure that you do not damage their valve heads and check for firm seating. For phase 2, Frank special filler compound can be used to avoid accidental seepage of resin during injection. No injection should take place until the filler compound has fully cured. For phase 3, pre-grouting is only required for actively leaking cracks or joints. After thorough mixing, intectin blitz is injected several times, horizontally in a row or vertically from the bottom to the top, until the flow of water is stopped. Intectin Plus has to be injected before the Intectin Blitz has time to cure. To seal dry or moist cracks or joints, use Intectin Plus only. After thorough mixing of the two component resins, several injections should be carried out in accordance with the project requirements until the crack or joint is filled completely. All injection work should be performed at pressures between approximately 20 and 40 bar. Depending upon circumstances, it may be necessary during the injection process to clean off any buildup of resin residue on the impeller mixer and pump using Intectin Special Cleaner. The final cleaning in Phase 4 contributes to the durability of the tools. For Phase 5, Grouting residues are removed and the treated surfaces are post-treated cosmetically.